We all have heard the rumors of Elon trying to buy Twitter, and while yes, that is true, the story goes much deeper. Is Twitter interested in being a free speech platform, or is Twitter interested in being a tool for propaganda? Musk is forcing the issue through his tender offer. When Musk offered $54 to buy Twitter, that represented, I believe it was about a 35, 38% premium at the time he made the offer over what the stock was trading. Moreover, in addition to the offer Musk made, Musk himself owns 9.2% of Twitter. This puts the Twitter board in a very awkward situation. Here's why. The board has to act as fiduciaries. In other words, the board has to do what is in Twitter's best interest or the best interest of the shareholders of Twitter. In other words, what will make the shareholders of Twitter the most money, or perhaps said more simply, what will make the Twitter stock price go up? Failing to do this could mean a breach of their fiduciary duties, which means that the board could be subject to a lawsuit. So how does this factor into Elon? When Elon did this, he forces the board to say, listen, if they choose, as they have chosen to decline the offer, the takeover offer, it's because the board says, well, listen, we think Twitter is more valuable than the $54 and what Musk can bring to the table. So if that's the case, then if the stock goes down, particularly if Musk dumps the stock, there will be a massive cause of action or a massive potential cause of action, legal action against board members for intentionally or seemingly intentionally destroying the value of the company. Now, my suspicion is, or the lens I look through this at, is I don't think Twitter is necessarily in business to make money. And more importantly, I don't think the people who stand behind Twitter and the people who stand behind those people necessarily want Twitter to make money. Don't get me wrong, Josh. If it makes money, that is a happy coincidence. Certainly no one will turn it down. But I suspect really what's going on is that the value of Twitter is to produce a narrative, to make a digital echo chamber, to, to, to shape viewpoints. And if Twitter, for example, I think back to the investment by the Saudi Prince, I can't say his name, but it's Kingdom Holdings, you know, another large shareholder in Twitter who publicly came through and said that, you know, he was only going to vote against it. If I was a foreign power and I wanted to project social influence and therefore political influence into the United States, Twitter would be an excellent tool to do so, particularly in the digital space, because if you can use Twitter to shape a narrative, if you can use Twitter to control what people see, you can probably then use that same method to control how people think about things. If you control what people think about things, you can... Influence. Sing them a song. Yeah, influence. Exactly. They're, 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 and that certainly is worth more than $54 per share. But this gets back to the takeover offer. See, if the Twitter board comes out and says, well, no, we don't want to do it because we're more valuable as a propaganda arm for maybe the U.S. government and people outside the U.S. government, that's going to raise some red flags. But at the same time, if the board says, yeah, we're willing to accept Elon's offer, and Elon comes in and opens up the door to free speech, or at least makes the Twitter commitment to free speech much more viable. In other words, it's much harder for Twitter to, sh Twitter to shadow ban people, to censor people, to kick people off the network. Maybe a certain someone is let back onto the network, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The key, the key is this. For the woke narrative to exist, it has to exist in the vacuum, I would argue, of the truth. In other words, lies always flee from the truth as the dark always flees from the light. And if the protection that is vigorously enforced on Twitter is suddenly removed, then I'm very curious to see what happens to this, uh, to this woke mindset that I suspect is being propped up from um anyways josh returning back to the financial issue at hand as i said the board's in a very awkward position because either they say no to elon because we can do better in other words we can make the stock go up i don't think they can or they say no we're not going to do it because twitter is more valuable as a propaganda arm at which point there's other serious questions that arise or they go through and say okay elon yep we looked at your offer we're willing to accept it if you've got the cash we've got the time and then elon comes in changes the culture opens up the door to free speech the woke narrative that i would argue needs the massive support of the moderation from twitter falls apart under the strain of truth josh as you're fond of saying sunlight being a good disinfectant for uh, for that either way it's kind of a lose-lose situation for uh, for the twitter board very curious to see how this plays out because like i said if they screw up if they breach their duties as fiduciaries for Twitter, that is a massive lawsuit. And Musk is no fool, and nor the people that are opposing Musk, I would think, too. But the key is both sides, they not only have access to the capital and the very deep pockets, as well as the experts, you know, the lawyers, the independent consultants, whatever, to advise and to see where this goes. What I'm surprised about is the outrage of Musk saying he's a proponent of free speech. And people are saying how bad that will be for our society. I mean, was our country not raised upon the essence of freedom and free speech and people are throwing it away asking to be censored they say it's like they want to be governed harder it is quite literally the most bizarre thing i've ever seen it makes me question if these people are even real yeah it forces it forces them to have to, you know to come to jesus moment and so again like the very people that decry and complain about should we say fascism are the very same people 
who use the exact same methods that they decry in order to prop up their own worldview, that they can't see the reflection. Yeah, if if you are so confident in your viewpoint, why are you not willing to accept others? Why can't you see the other viewpoint and try and express your views against them? Because that is how we communicate and exchange ideas and ultimately come up with the truth, which I believe Elon is trying to push for. This is really bringing light upon the situation because it may put some light bulbs and some cracks in the armor of some of these people who have not had to think for a long time. If nothing else, it's exposing what Twitter really is. Or back up. I would suspect the more accurate lens to view Twitter as, if one has de facto control from the shadows of Twitter and can shape the digital narrative behind the scenes without being caught, then it's a tool for propaganda. It's a tool for social control. And I also note, Josh, too, I didn't have time to go through and do my research on this. It just caught, you know, some passing headlines that both Vanguard and State Street, you know, picked up a pretty large position. I believe it was Wednesday, Thursday. Don't quote me on that earlier this week. And so again, I kind of wonder, like, what's really going on here, guys? Is Twitter really this bombshell investment that suddenly you're just now? getting in? Is this a merger arbitrage play? Or are people who, who are, or, or the powerful people who stand behind the powerful people that we know saying, oh, no, 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 we can't let Twitter fall. In other words, we can't let the control mechanism fall. I don't know either way, but I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Justin's not on Twitter, so he doesn't have a good grasp of this, but Twitter is one of the freest speech of any platform. If you if you look at the, well, I'm saying in comparison, if you look at the, the YouTubes, the uh, CNN, Fox is the mainstream media, you can at least see alternative viewpoints on Twitter, at least for the size and scale. Twitter is probably the biggest network that there is. That is not to say there is no censorship. In fact, there is deep censorship. I mean, if you're political or not, I, I hate all politicians with a passion, but to, to ban a past president of the United States for, for speaking is just absolutely mind blowing. So there is a lot of truth that we are not seeing and a lot of messages that be, are being portrayed upon us. So if Musk does happen to take over, it, I, I don't think he will. He has the power to though, because the powers that be have no incentive to let him because their entire, their entire ideology and ability to do what they are doing lies upon the ability to censor and, and push propaganda. And control the narrative. Josh, I would put one slight, I completely agree with you on that, but I would frame it slightly differently. The powers that be and the powers behind the powers that be don't want this to happen, but they would allow it to happen if the risk of not allowing it to happen exceeds the risk of it happening. This is where Musk can come in and shine as a show, as, as you know, the salesman that he is. Because of the general public wakes up and says, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Like Twitter, what actually are you? You see, the instant people come to perceive Twitter as a potential way to shape the narrative or as it's essentially a way to generate, you know, a mindset, is the instant Twitter's going to lose the power or the uh, allure that it has, you know, to the, to the elites or whatever. So it's a very, very interesting, very interesting time on that front. Lastly, I'll note this social media companies, in which Twitter is no exception, rely, I believe it's section 240. It's the immunity that grants them, uh, these people as on um, platforms, not publishers to, uh, that is immunity from, um, from libel. If Twitter is actually shown, or if Twitter basically says, listen, you know, we engage in content moderation because we want to create a community. We want to create a safe space, whatever. And of course that's the right to do. I'm not trying to say Twitter, does not have that right. And I, I certainly would, would argue there there is a case to be made for that. There's some nuances there, but let's just say for all intents and purposes, that's an argument that can easily seduce me. Here's the follow-up to that. You can't claim that you are a platform in that case. You are a publisher. And if you're a publisher, you cannot claim Section 240 immunity. In other words, you have to open yourself up to libel or you, you have to expose yourself to legal liability. So again, if for no other if for nothing else, Twitter can't have it both ways. They can't basically do shadow moderation and then claim to be a neutral platform. And I think Musk is leading the charge of basically showing the public, like, listen, guys, you know, take a second look at Twitter and see what's really going on here. And if for no other reason, look at all these powerful people, Vanguard, State Street, et cetera, that seem me coming, or coming, the SEC going after Elon just announced too. Look at all these powerful people coming out of the woodwork and just look at the response. Just, just gauge the response and then ask yourself, or maybe just think to yourself, why is that response happening? It's almost like they're scared. None. Or, Nonetheless, you have to question if they are not going to accept a 38% premium to their stock price, that means their objectives are not 
to provide to their shareholders and to make the maximum amount of money possible. And they fly. And absolutely. So if they if they are not pursuing the best interests of their company, what are they pursuing? I We do not have answers to this, but we will lay the question upon you. Well, guys, without further ado, thank you, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.